Feature matching is useless if we can't do anything about it. Thankfully, there are many things we can do with it, but one overlooked application is camera motion compensation. Camera motion compensation allows us to account for camera motion as applications in object tracking, camera velocity regression, and digital video stabilization, and it strongly depends on good feature matching for it to work. In this video, we will learn how to apply camera motion compensation to a pair of images. So, how does camera motion compensation work? What is it doing to compute the relative difference between frames? So what it does is it computes something called a rigid body transformation, which is nothing more than a translation and a rotation in the XY plane. So let's look and see what a rigid body transformation is. I'll just give you a quick visual. Let's go to Google. So right, right here is an easy, easier to see. So right here we have a box and we rotate it by some angle theta. So this rotation could be described by a two by two rotation matrix. And this one right here, this is a you know true rigid body transformation. We have the first image right here and we have it rotated by some rotation and then the center has been translated by some translation vector described by an X and a Y. So that, that's what that is. That's what a rigid body transformation is. So, and this right here, once we get the rigid body transformation, we could actually use that for our application. We could use it for improving tracking accuracy, estimating the speed of a moving camera, or digital video stabilization. So working backwards, if we want to do one of these things and we have our rigid body transformation, so how did we get to that rigid body transformation? We had to compute matching features from one image to the next. And one way to do that is to compute features in one image and then match them to the next image. So we use a typical corner detection or feature detection algorithm. We're going to use Shitomasi and FAST, and we're going to use Lucas Canande Optical Flow to compute the matching features in the next frame. So we could also use something called brute force matching, but typically brute force matching is, is a little bit less efficient and it's more suited for when a 3D scene is captured from very different locations. In this case, we're making our strong assumption that our frame rate is high enough such that each subsequent image is going to be, or have features that are very, very close to each other. So we're basically assuming, you know, like a 30 hertz frame rate or something like that. I haven't gone into that detail, but that's basically, you know, we're assuming a high frame rate. So let's dive into this and hopefully a couple of examples will clear things up. So first off, we're going to get our data from somewhere called the Mars Challenge. So this is a, um, an autonomous truck company in Korea, and they have a challenge that basically involves camera velocity regression. So I'm not, we're not going to get into the challenge today, but that's for another time. So first we're going to import the libraries. I've already done that. I've already downloaded the video. And we're going to stream the first 2,000 frames of this video just to have some data to work with. And I'm going to just choose, I've just chosen frame 1,000. So we convert it to grayscale and then we compute the features. So we're going to do pretty quick features. So I'm going to use 100 corners with Shitomasi and then I'm going to set a very high threshold that will generally give us less features for fast. And I'm also going to time it just to get the relative differences. So we have about 200 microseconds for fast. And about 9 milliseconds for Shitomasi. So in a real-time application, we're probably going to want to go with fast because that's going to be a lot more efficient when computational resources are limited. So let's go ahead and get our corners from it. And we can see we have 212 corners. So that should be enough to compute the motion compensation or to compute the transformation matrix. So I've found that in general, we need about 50 to 100 to get a good computation. But when there's a lot of background objects that are moving, such as people or cars, we need many more. And it really seems to depend on how many objects are moving in the background. So that's really going to mess things up because it's going to kind of it's going to make the problem or the optimization harder to solve. So right here we have 
a way to find the matched corners, and we're using Lucas Canande Optical Flow. Uh, as we said earlier, we could also use an OpenCV Brute Force Matcher, but we're not going to do that in this tutorial. So now we're going to get the previous and current points and use those to estimate the affine matrix. So this rigid body transformation matrix A is also known as an affine matrix. That's just the type of matrix or a class of matrices. So here's our our affine transformation matrix here. This first two terms right here is our rotation matrix. If we had um, a just ones here in the diagonal and zeros in the off diagonal, that would be a zero rotation because it's just the identity matrix. And here is the translation vector. So we're going negative six and negative nine. So we could use this function called open this OpenCV function called warp affine to actually apply this to the image, and we can see what it looks like. So we see that this image is this left image has been aligned to the right image, and we have a slight offset at the bottom where it's blank. So this vehicle is actually moved forward in the second image, and to compensate for it, this affine transformation matrix has pushed it forward. So now we can take a plot of the original minus or the second minus the first, and the transform first minus the second. So right here we could see that you know this is frame one and frame two things are pretty blobby there's very very um you know wide thick corners and edges which indicates it's not a very good alignment on these edges right here and over here you can see all the edges and corners are very thin which means we're much better aligned and it's generally darker indicating that there's a less of a difference between images so we can see that this transformation was actually somewhat more effective so now we can put this together in a pipeline. So right here, I'm just given the option of any any kind of detection you want. Right here, I have um, fast, Shitamasi. You can add in other ways. And right here, here's the matching step. I'm using optical flow. There's other ways of matching. You can implement brute force matching if you want. And here, I'm just getting the current points and the previous points to feed into the optimization to estimate the affine transformation which we do right here and then here is the return so right here i'm calling this a failure case but this is actually a case where our assumption is going to break down so our assumption is that the features from frame to frame are going to be very small so in this case it looks like the vehicle is stopped at a stoplight or a stop sign and a bus is driving by and it, when this bus drives by from a single frame this left door is roughly at a pixel 100 horizontally and in the next frame it's roughly at pixel 200 horizontally so we have a, about a 100 pixel shift from frame to frame and our assumption where features from frame to frame are the difference is small it breaks down and this could actually wreak havoc on an application such as tracking or camera such as where we use camera motion compensation for tracking or digital video stabilization or camera velocity estimation. So let, let's see what we get right here. And let's just see if we can actually compute the affine transformation matrix. So here, here's the matrices that we compute, and you can see they're you know they're non-zero, and we're gonna get something. So let's let's see what happens. And notice how I used uh, 500 points for Shitamasi and um, a threshold of 10 for fast. Both this this 500 is pretty self-explanatory. We just look for 500 corners and this right here. So basically the larger the threshold, the less values we get. So the smaller the threshold, we get more values. So I'm pretty sure this is going to give us over a thousand values right here, but I could be, could be wrong. I would have to test it. So let's see what exactly this looks like. So we're plotting these out. We're, plot, we're going to plot the original, the transformed with fast, transformed with Shita Masi in frame two. So we can see that in both of the transformed, we have the, the left door of this bus roughly at 200. So we have more than enough features to actually compute the rigid body transformation to compensate for the motion in the image. But this is not compensating for the motion in the camera since the entire field of view has been that has been captured is of a moving object. So this is a case where just because the method works the way you intended, the application could actually fail. And it's important to understand these failure cases when you're actually trying to use something for your application. So I hope you learned a little bit of something, and we're going to see the difference between the
transformation matrices so we can see that it's generally not too large and we get a you know rough roughly a, roughly aligned with these transformations so not not too bad I think the trade-off here you have a little bit seems like you have a little bit more control of the features the sheet Tomasi but fast is much much faster and even if you get more features it might be better to use fast since there's orders of magnitude faster so that being all I think this is all for this one. I'll see you on the next one.